All right, guys, uh, this is something that we missed back when we talked about Death of a Salesman. We talked a lot about Arthur Miller's agenda, but we didn't really talk about his theatrical style. So <clears throat> this is just the end of a slideshow that I wasn't able to get to. We're going to talk about poetic realism, which is a nice blend of Ibsen-style fourth wall domestic realism, but also some other things mixed in there. And as you saw with uh, Death of a Salesman, there's a real variance in terms of realism versus theatricalism in the play. So, um, poetic realism is a very, very much a post-war American phenomenon. Arthur Miller and Tennessee Williams are the two primary practitioners. It involves psychologically realistic acting, so n nothing as abstract as the absurd, for example. Uh, it's very straightforward, very psychologically realistic. You study characters, real-life historical figures, actual people, things like that. Generally speaking, poetic realism is always set in a particular time, a historical era, and it's almost always contemporary. Both Tennessee Williams and Arthur Miller tend to write about things that happen in America in the 20th century uh, for the most part. So contemporary story and subject matter is a key. There are, however, in poetic realism, there are a number of non-realistic departures. There is a consistent and recurring emphasis on memory and time in poetic realism. We have, um, obviously, in Death of a Salesman, all kinds of places where the story jumps in and out of uh, Willie's memory. His memory is fractured, and so one of the things that Arthur Miller's done is said, human memory is imperfect, so why should the story, the way in which I tell this play, be perfect uh, in terms of its chrono chronological explanation? And it's not. We jump all over the place in time. Obviously, Glass Menagerie, Tennessee Williams' Glass Menagerie, is another huge one in that regard. Uh, the whole thing is a frame story. It's a memory play. So we see in a lot of different poetic realistic style or plays that style requires uh, almost a, a big emphasis on how memory and time are complex, are not realistic, and are not reliable. Lyrical poetic dialogue is another huge important part of poetic realism. People speak just a little bit more beautifully than they would in everyday normal life. And this is kind of a subjective thing, but we see it quite a lot. Tennessee Williams characters especially uh, if you think about Tom's monologue at the beginning or the end of Glass Menagerie, is very much more lyrical and poetic than most regular everyday people might might uh, speak in. There are a couple places in Salesman where Willie speaks in a little bit of a heightened style. Um, certainly, I would say Linda's grave uh, graveside final speech is a little bit more lyrical and poetic. Generally speaking, what we're talking about here is a much more softened expressionism. So remember, going back to Harry Ape, expressionism is this sort of nightmarish reality that is inside the head of the main character. Uh, so we are seeing how the world impacts them, and we're, we're sort of living inside the character's head. Uh, we're trying to stage an emotional state or an interior condition. You can see, for instance, with the death of a salesman, all the different distortions are in many ways an attempt to stage an interior condition. One of Arthur Miller's working titles for the play was Inside His Head. And so this is a play that very much, in many ways, can be seen to take place inside Willie's head. And that's very expressionistic in that regard. It's interior, it's internal, it's deliberately distorted, which is another element of expressionism that's carried along. But it's not quite as dark and grim as Harry Ape, for example. So we're headed in the road of down the road of expressionism, but we're not quite all the way there yet. Scenic design is a hugely important tie-in here, um, and you'll see, as with everything else, a mixture of design styles, both realistic elements and anti-realistic elements combined in the same thing, and that's where we get poetic realism on the stage. Joe Melziner is one of the most important and famous American designers of the 20th century, and he was really the person who took the, the poetic realistic texts of Miller and of Williams and others and put them on stage in this really compelling and interesting visual way. So here we have, for example, Melziner's sketch uh, for the exterior, the frame scenes in The Glass Menagerie. And again, it's mostly realistic. You can see the city and when I go to the next one, you'll be able to see the interior. But he's also taken a non-realistic metaphor, this is a frame story, and literally applied that to his design. Here's a frame, and inside the frame is this almost box of light, which is, in many ways, Tom's memory. And so there's soft focus here. There's a, just a tiny little bit of a distortion. It's not as unrealistic as a lot of the absurd, but you see the anti-realistic approach here. 
Here's another Tennessee Williams set, uh, Summer and Smoke. This is a Mel Zener design from 1948. We have two realistic, mostly realistic interiors, but then you have the sort of wasteland in between and the very skeletal feel of the two houses. Another great example of Mel Zener design poetic realism in, uh, uh, in visual storytelling anyway. Here we have some early Melziner sketches for Death of a Salesman, and you can see, most notably, the background here of the top photo. We've got the city closing in around the house, and the buildings are deliberately distorted. Um, we also have the sort of skeletal frame of the house. Um, another sketch, and you can get a better and more sort of a, a fixed idea of where those buildings are headed towards. Distorted, but also realistic at the same time. A nice combination of expressionism and realism. And then Here's actual, an actual image of the original set design, and this image has a watermark on it, so if you see a, a weird circle, which you can see pretty clearly, that has nothing to do with the design. But you can see the realism here. It's historically specific. We have a historically accurate table, chairs, refrigerator, stove, all the stuff you see is realistic. But the way the set is designed, things are opened up, and we're really focused on a lot of the... Um, sort of emotional distortion and feeling. And then also, we can step right off the front of this set, and that's where a lot of Willie's memory scenes took place. So there's a great deal of distortion and chaos here, um, in addition to the really straightforward realism. This one is Guys and Dolls. This is the uh, sewer scene in uh, the gambling scene in Guys and Dolls, which not very many sewers look like that. And if you've seen the film, it looks very similar to this. It's mostly realistic. It feels kind of like an underground sewer, but it's more stylized and it's more interesting. Guys and Dolls is not an example of poetic realism, but this set design certainly fits with the overall idea. So as you think about Death of a Salesman, don't just think about Miller's approach on the American dream. That's, the, that's his uh, agenda, certainly, but also think about where we see that theatrical style executed and how that poetic realism relates to his take on the American dream, how that sort of um, complex, distorted, anti-realistic mode of storytelling with the jumps in time, with the flute that plays in the background in Willie's head, uh, and a handful of other anti-realistic devices, Ben, his brother, who isn't obviously really there, how the choice of style clearly relates to the agenda that Miller's trying to accomplish. That's it.